Black women are trailblazers. They are the vanguards of society, inspiring new generations of leaders across industries. Black women are the souls, the consciousness, and the heartbeats of innovation. Guided by the ancestors and driven by passion, we open doors, break glass ceilings, and exceed expectations. Black women are phenomenal and deserve all the flowers. Take a closer look at a dynamic entrepreneur and celebrate our magic in this episode of About Her Business. I would account the industry moving forward to black reality TV shows. Like Black Ink was the first black tattoo show that we've seen. And like, yeah, it was a lot of, you know, drama and things like that that people want to see. But behind it is amazing artistry. And now the world gets to see black tattoo artists. You know, I wouldn't have the platform that I do, you know, if it wasn't for it. So I think it all accounts to, to media and television and those mainstream outlets. After high school, I had really high ACT scores in math. I applied to like all the top schools and I got accepted to one, it was Mizzou. For students who had high test scores, you had to get a certain GPA. I got the GPA I needed to get and I got my scholarship in math. So I was gonna be a math teacher because I loved math. I loved tutoring people in math. I was so good at it that it was a no brainer. And then I started doing tattoos my freshman year. My career plans were to be a math teacher and then tattoo during the summer. Like I thought I had it all figured out. I realized it wasn't gonna work like that and tattooing was 100% business. Like it's not anything you can do 50-50. So I let go of the, the math plans. Art has always been like my easy A. Like my mom, she could draw really good. So I felt like I got the talent from her. And then in high school, people would be like, you know, can you draw my tattoo? So I became the girl that drew everybody's tattoos. Cause I would be walking around with like a big art portfolio, like a little art geek. And then when it came for me to get my first tattoo, I drew it out. And the artist was like, yo, this is really dope. Like you should try it. That's where it was all born. I just ordered up a kit and tried it. <laughs> Being a tattoo artist, I would have never imagined it. One of my drawings in my art class got selected for the NAACP AXO program, and I ended up winning first place in Illinois. So from that point on, I really focused on art. I was 16, and then by the time I was 18, I was doing tattoos. Once I made the decision, because both my parents were like in corporate America and they were just all about their business. They would always tell me like, Trina, you're doing great. Like, you know, your tattooing is great, but it's a hustle. You know, you gotta focus on college, focus on your career. And I would say, tattooing can be a career. Like I'm gonna make a career out of it. I promise it's not just gonna be a hustle. Like if y'all just support me, I will take this thing to the top. And they believed me and ever since they gave me that support, like I had a mission. I've come from tattooing in the basement. I come from tattooing in a dorm. I come from working at a shop in the hood. I've always like elevated and I know what like hole in the wall tattoo shops look like. And I always had a vision of being elite in this, specifically for my culture, like for black tattoo artists, like I wanted to be a pioneer in shifting the culture. That's always been the goal for me. Once I started tattooing, like I was really, really passionate about it. There was not many things that made me want to give up on that craft other than feeling like I wasn't good. I wasn't a professional. I was a self-taught artist. And I would be on social media and see people who are dedicated to tattooing and just killing it. And here I am, I felt like I was a half-assed student and a half-assed tattoo artist because I'm not pouring 100% into any of them. So I had to make that sacrifice to leave school on scholarship, you know, if I wanted to be great at it. You know, and that came with a lot of negativity, like you're dropping out of school to do what? Like to tattoo? It was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't do this. I just made the decision to stick with tattooing despite what anybody else was saying. The main thing for me, which I struggled with, was just getting in a professional shop. I would watch YouTube videos, I would order books, I would do everything that I could to be self-taught because I didn't have time to work at a tattoo shop full time and none of the shops in my college town would hire me. So that was my main goal after I dropped out. Like I have to get in a shop because that's the only way I'm gonna be a professional. So once I left, I started working at two shops actually at the same time and I got to learn from those artists. But the way that I got hired there, I got tattooed by the owner. Kept getting tattoos, kept spending that money, 
kept learning every time he's tattooing me. And then eventually he took me under his wing and showed me everything professionally. Once you get taught by a professional, that's what takes your work next level. I would say 100% was risk. If I didn't take any risk, I wouldn't be successful. Like I had to make that choice, one, to, to leave what I was doing, a university, to be a full-time tattoo artist. I had to take a risk to leave Chicago, to move to LA, where I don't know too many people, where I wanna live and, and open up my own business. So that was very risky. Anything that is too easy isn't worth having. I could just appreciate, you know, the challenge and, and all the steps and the obstacles that I had to go through in order to, to be where I'm at. From when I started to now, like women are embracing themselves, their femininity, and also their art. They don't have to hide anymore. Like there's a whole plethora of women who are beautiful, who are black, who are amazing tattoo artists and like killing it. I love to see that because I just remember, you know, how that felt, like really having to kind of dim your light in order to, to get where you want to be. It's amazing to me how much, you know, the doors have been kicked down for us. Now when you go to the conventions and everything, it's filled with, you know, black tattoo artists. And that comes with more amazing tattoos on people with dark skin. Like we know what looks good and we have that experience. For me, it's always just been go, 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 go. You really gotta like, take those moments to really sit aside and focus and reflect on your accomplishments, like it's important. So with all the hecticness that was opening up a tattoo shop and all the business that had to be done, I just did some research and I'm like, are there any other female tattoo owned shops around here? Are there any other black women owned tattoo shops around here? And I just, that's when I realized, you know, that there wasn't and it just showed me again that what I'm doing is much bigger. You know what I mean? I'm focused on just, the grand opening date, you know, but when you take that time to really reflect and focus on what you're actually doing, it just showed me that what I was doing was much bigger. And here, five years later, I was right, you know, because people have recognized that. And now this is a staple for black tattoo artists all over, you know, so yeah, it feels great. <laughs> What's most gratifying, there's so many different things. Like, of course you have the art aspect of, you know, doing tattoos and I get to impress myself or just really, really, you know, doing something that impresses the client that they just love, like really being satisfied with my art, having a vision and literally bringing it to life. That's one of the main things for me. The longer that I've been tattooing, like the bigger my designs got, you know, it went from just doing names and small little stuff to now like, I wanna do this masterpiece, a full back piece. I wanna do a full sleeve. I wanna do a full leg sleeve. Just having a vision and seeing it come together is definitely the number one. And then two, I've done a lot of portraits and it almost kind of gave me anxiety a bit. Like when my clients would fly across the country here to get a tattoo by me, because that's a lot of pressure, you know? But I mean, so many people from all over have so many different stories. You know, they may want a portrait of someone that they lost and being able to execute that for them and just see what it really means to that person and you know, how much they did to, to get it by me, that's definitely number two, I would say. Some of the doors that have been open, I mean, for me, being on a national TV show and doing amazing work on that show, now the world will want to book me, you know? So I don't have to worry about not being booked up for a long time. I've always been a family woman. Like I've always been a daddy's girl. Me and my brothers are super close. Me and my mom are super close. And I've always wanted a family of my own. Like my whole family knows that about me. Like I've always just dreamed of having babies. So I didn't know when it was gonna happen. I always said, that whatever happens with me, I feel like it's gonna happen really fast. And I was 28 years old, focused on my business. My now husband came in here, got a tattoo from me, and boom, we married and got two kids. <laughs> and it happened so fast. Like my life has changed so much just over the past three years that, you know, it's kind of like whiplash. Like, but you gotta like, you know, just embrace it. But I had to figure out like, okay, how do I let go of that? I'm a, you know, I don't need a man, I'm strong, independent, me, 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 you know, kind of selfish to now like you consider your husband, you consider your kids, it's literally no longer about you. It's been a smooth journey, but it's definitely a journey and it's a transition that you really have to embrace. 
Most of my 20s, it was just me that I had to account for. I was young, I was just business, business, business. Like, I'm doing a full back piece, I'm gonna finish this back piece. I don't care if it takes me till five in the morning, I'm finishing that, you know? And now having a family, like, it absolutely, you know, pulls you away from work. And after I had my firstborn, I was so hung up on like, okay, I wanna be a working mom. Like, I wanna get back to it. I wanna get back to it. And then four months later, I was pregnant again, you know? So I think that was God telling me like, slow down and focus on the blessings that are my family. I think that's the ingredient for sure. What's next in my career? Where I'm at with it is just finding the balance. I don't know, I get that question a lot. Like, what's next, what's next? But like, I'm really focused on like the right now. Like right now I'm trying to figure out how to balance, you know, having a family, being a happy family and running a successful business, you know, and trying to do both. Cause I haven't mastered that yet, you know? So right now I'm focused on the show coming out and you know, it being a success and seeing what other opportunities that brings, not only for me, but for my shop and for my family, just really trying to balance it all. And then I think once I I got that down packed, you know, I'm a little more settled with that, then I can start focusing on the next big thing. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I'm really excited for the viewer to see me as a family woman and really to see what is truly important to me. I think a lot of people might have a conception of me. Everybody knows me as Cat Tag. You know, but now I'm a family woman. I love my kids to death and I'm really excited for people to see me in that light and come along this journey with me as I learn how to balance it all. And I want to be the blueprint who can kind of juggle it all. It doesn't have to give up one in order to do the other. So that's what I want people to learn about me and see if I can do it. <laughs>